Yes, it did happen. 4-1 to Newcastle United against PSG. And Charlotte and I thought we'd do another video at TFTV this time to revel in the glory of the greatest Champions League win in football history. history. Why not? I'm allowed to say it. I'm, I'm allowed, Charlotte. I make the rules. And Charlotte, I have grown in confidence because of this result. Finally, I've plucked up the courage to ask you the key question that I've been wanting to ask you all season, really, if I'm honest with myself. Charlotte Robson, can anyone give us a fucking game? Certainly not PSG, that's for sure, because they were rubbish. Actually, they were really good. We were just better. They weren't rubbish. I don't want to. I don't want to rubbish our opponents and just say they were shit. So we were good. We were good, and they were good, and we were just better. So no, they can't give us a game. Maybe West Ham will give us a game, but also maybe probably not. Maybe they have a funny sort of like way of being, don't they? Look how tired I am. I'm so tired. It was so, so good last night. I'm so tired. We made a video and podcast and um, that was all post game. And as a result, I have the eyes of a zombie, but I wouldn't change it for the world. (laughs) The sacrifices fans make um, to witness fucking insane mental nights at St. James's Park. It's no sacrifice, Charlotte. You, You don't think that I'm putting words into your mouth. You're right. It was good. It was worth it. What a privilege to be there. I just can't get over Charlotte. You know, like the atmosphere was just sensational. You know, before the game, before the game, when the PSG yeah. players were warming up in front of the Leasers end and just taking like random shots at goal, you know, get get the muscles moving in the right direction, get the blood pumping. Nothing too serious. It's just a kick about every time a PSG player missed the goal there was a huge sarcastic cheer yeah of like way <laughs> you know that that yeah. beautiful sarcasm of the english football fan it's so not good. abusive it's it's just it's just mocking them and this like if you're a psg player like i'm not even at work yet i'm practicing to go to work that's weird and you're mocking me that's it. Mocking they're definitely me. contracted to train and practice <laughs> it's definitely work yeah. Isn't it? Isn't but, it work? but I, I, you're right. But, but I just, I just love the fact that it's already one nil at that point. It's already one nil when half an hour before kickoff, the ground is full, the songs are being sung. You and I are staring at the coaching staff. One of us. You, more speak than for the yourself. Other. I'm not weird. <laughs> I'm normal. It was just, it was just one of those nights, Charlotte, where everything went perfectly. Everything. It just couldn't have gone any better it was such a good night and Charlotte I want want you to talk to to me and to the viewer about the four goal scorers because of all these goal scorers Charlotte I reckon all four of them either as players or positionally are players that a lot of Newcastle fans wanted to fuck right off out of that team they wanted to improve them get rid of Dan Byrne get a proper left back in we need a right center back we need one Charlotte a right center back we need one uh, even though Sean's a playing left centre back, but ignore that. We need better than Sean Longstaff, so we bought Tonali. And who else scored? I've forgotten. Miguel Almiron. Almiron. Everyone hates Almiron <laughs> sometimes. So, yeah. T- t- tell us, Charlotte, how beautiful it was that these four players should write their own history. Incredibly beautiful. One thing I will say, we had some feedback on the last video that um, you're not saying share right. Stop saying Shaw, it's share. So, thank you for the feedback. I know that I've been saying it right the entire time, which is why I've taken the opportunity to point it out. But I will say that the goal scorers, it was it's such a beautiful narrative, isn't it? It's such a beautiful story. Football's all about these little stories. And you said it on our free podcast, Alex, about how the average viewer who isn't a fan of Newcastle isn't going to know the story of Jacob Mur- why Jacob Murphy giving an assist to Fabian Cher and getting a, a getting an assist in a Champions League game is of note, but it's more than of note. All these stories are so important, and and they're even more important because these are the players that Fabian Cher was going to be let go on a free. He was an unused sub in the Wolves game before the takeover, as many people have pointed out on Twitter. Miguel Almiron, people have called for him to be dropped. He doesn't have a right foot. He's this, he's this, he's rubbish, blah, blah, blah. He just runs around like a headless chicken. Dan Byrne, he's not fast enough. He's not a left back. He shouldn't be in that position. Sean Longstaff, he's been up and down. He's had injury. Like, is he up to this? Is he up to this league? 
is he up to the Champions League? Well, it turns out they're all fucking up to the Champions League because they all scored goals and they all scored mint goals as well. Dan Burns was certainly a bit scrappy, but that leap, that leap and that header, like using his physical presence and his enormous height to get that goal, that that that, that is. I couldn't be happier for these lads. It's not. I know our small magazine show is supposed to be a bit funny, but that was probably a little bit earnest. But there isn't like I don't want to make fun of them. I want to. I want to like. I want to applaud them and be happy and cry with pride. Uh, viewers of the last TFTV we did at the start of this week, which feels like 100 years ago, oh, yeah. um, will have seen the book that I would have chosen to read if I was at a football match, which is a hashtag Ask TFTV, and it was the big book of class lads. I think I'm going to need a bigger book, Charlotte. I think I'm going to need a bigger book of class. That's like, because... like watching Jaws. I think you're going to need a bigger book. That's you've <laughs> maybe never seen Jaws, but they say boat. Current. It's a good current film reference, Charlotte. Right? <laughs> <Everyone knows. laughs> Another one hooking in the the youth, the youth viewers. <laughs> but this is the thing. I have perhaps been somewhat discriminatory. <laughs> by dividing our beautiful team into class lads and very good footballers, but not class lads. I feel like I have to accept that they're all just absolutely fucking class until we lose again. And that's then I'm allowed to just disparage them. That's how football works. Somebody noted that maybe we should have class lads and then fucking class lads. Yeah, maybe that is the tier system that we're going to have to move into. And then when they get even better, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. But maybe that's what we have to start thinking about. I'll say right here, right now, and this, and this is really important to you, Charlotte, you think about all the time, is who is in my class lad collection. Fabian yeah. Cher is top tier now. He's a fucking class lad. Fucking what a footballer. Man. He can do things on the pitch that loads of other play, players can't. And it's not just smash one in the top corner while falling down. It's just the overall contribution to the pitch. It's the aesthetic. It's the way he wears the shirt. It's just perfect. Fabian Cher, you are class. You're fucking class. Thoughts? You're fucking class. You got it wrong. You can't. <laughs> you can't inaugurate him into the fucking class, lads, and then forget to use the the f bomb. Uh, no, I totally agree. I think he's absolutely mint. Like he was amazing last night. He's been an incredible player for the last two years. Big give or take, maybe the last year and a half. I have so enjoyed watching all of our players get better, and he's he's just come on in leaps and bounds. The confidence, the the enjoyment he seems to be getting from the football, ah, he's meant. I love him. He's also really fit. We deserve it, I think, the whole club and, and myself as well. So I'm just uh, working hard and, and also at the same time uh, enjoy it. Let's move on to point number two, Charlotte. And let's talk a little bit about PSG and their fans. We had a good view of them, you and I, from the Melbourne stand last night. Really weird group, in my opinion. You know, it. I don't want to disparage their ultra culture, that rhymes. Um, nice. But it, I do find it strange that like, like they're like, right, where should we do a big march with our you know aggressively written banner in red, scary letters? Let's go scary to letters. the like notorious. <laughs> let's go to the notorious Newcastle pubs where hooligans once roamed, where we know we'll get the most aggravation, or we'll go to fucking Grey Street next to like Harry's Bar <laughs> and Bar Luger. <laughs> They well, have a like real so- they're, they're they're Parisians, you know. They they wanted yeah. to see one of the most beautiful streets in England voted several times. That's what they wanted. We're here. We're, we may be here for the football, but we're also here to see the sea. Yeah, like you say, they they could go on this big ultra walk about oh, how aggressive we are. Oh, there's the Theatre Royal. What beauty! I wonder what's on. Oh, um, Forty Second Street. Quite- we'll come back. That's a musical. <laughs> That's what's on. <laughs> But they were quite moody, Charlotte. Do you think? What was your view of the PSG fans? It's our first European visitors in a long time. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. My opinion of the PSG visitors was almost exclusively: How do you get a drum? How do you get several drums in here? Why have you got so many drums? When we went to AC Milan, I was like, my my A4 sized purse was was thoroughly rummaged through, and. I couldn't have brought in a drum. Like, who's pretending to be pregnant with a drum to get in? Like, I don't understand how. And it was more than one <laughs> drum. It had to have been. That that also assumes there's there's any females in the wind, and I didn't see any. I didn't see any at all. Um, I, I do know. like the idea that some, someone's put one up their jumper and <laughs> pretended it is a human child. 
but it's a drum. <laughs> but you are, you are, your point is a good one. We went to AC Milan. You weren't allowed water. You, you weren't allowed to take anything in. These guys have got flares and drums. Whereas, you know, when they go flares to Milan... Like, flares is like one thing, because you can hide it down your pants or whatever, maybe. I mean, they were pretty <laughs> thorough at Milan patting you down. But I think, like, you could probably see that getting in easier than a fucking drum. How yeah. did it happen? Earlier in the day, uh, I was out and about in the city of Newcastle, and... There was a load of PSG fans all looking very kind of, I don't know what the right word is, but like, I mean, it wasn't that cold yesterday, but like big ski jacket wear, um, looking kind of moody. And they'd all gone into this off license next to Pink Lane called Mr. Q's. And they all came out with Stella, which is very, very, you know, I I assume it's the, you know, most French beer they could find. It's not French, but it's it's the same language. And I was thinking to myself, you've come all the way, to Newcastle, you've got all of these. You you come to the drinking city. If you want to drink alcohol before a football match, you're in the right place. Everywhere I'll let you in. Everywhere's open. There's there's like fucking one thousand bars or something like that. There's there's just everywhere, and you've decided to go to Mister Q's off license for kind of lukewarm pint cans of Stella. And then Charlotte, I realised that's exactly what we do. That is 100%. literally exactly. I was going to say, where's the criticism we here? We do that when we when we go abroad as well. You, you just want to get some cans and, and walk that's around true. the city. Get cans you know, no cri- and slide down the road on your belly. Like that's what we do <laughs> if it's raining. <laughs> point three. Let's move on to point number three, Charlotte. Which was your point? So take it away, please. Very quick point, but I just wanted to say about um, Kieran Trippier and Kylian Mbappe and how his son, apparently, he said in the press conference before the game, my son is like a mascot and he's asked if he can walk out with Mbappe. And I said, if you, if you, if you walk out with Mbappe, don't, don't look at me. Like his son, who must be really small, <laughs> who's like really young, but don't look at me. I, I know he's joking, but it's very funny. And then uh, Mbappe gave... Trippier his shirt um like I think after the game and there's this really adorable picture that Trippier shared on his Instagram of him standing by his little boy and his boys in this shirt which is essentially a a cloak because he's so little somebody did point out in the I mean one of the London Magpie group chats and somebody was like well at least Mbappe's shirt wouldn't have been dirty or sweaty after that game (laughs) 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 I thought it was very funny that is funny that's very good it's it's nice though, isn't it? You know, a little bit of, of family drama for Kieran. Does it mm. bother him? Nah, he's just gonna, he's just going to go and play absolutely class against against his son's idol. Yeah. Which, if anything, we'll just, we'll just kind of. I'm not suggesting that Kieran Trippier's son was in danger of becoming the alpha male in that home. Seems ridiculously unlikely to me. Mm. But just in case, he has now, you know, assured his dominance. He he's not, he's got a few years in him yet to play top quality Champions League football at the absolute highest level against the best players in the world and just put in his casual 9 out of 10 you know it's Kieran Trippier, 9 out of 10s every single week he's got a fucking shit fantastic. well done let's oh, amazing shall we do a hashtag ask TFTV mm, probably gonna do a theme song Lewis what went wrong for your team out there tonight <sighs> <laughs> Small magazine show. We have uh, we have a couple of hashtag Ask TFTV, so thank you for getting them in. We really appreciate it. The first is from at Atletoon. Is it Atlanta Toon? I don't know. Atlanta Toon. He says, speaking of books, if Eddie Howe and Jason Tindall each had autobiographies, what would their titles be, Charlotte? Ooh. Eddie Howe's would be something quite serious. I don't think he'd do like a jokey title. It would be like my life and it would just be a really <laughs> comprehensive, <laughs> like it would probably just be a list of like things that have happened. <laughs> it's like, I am busy. I will bullet point everything that's happened in my life. You can fill in the blanks. I'm busy working. Jason Tindall's has got to be some kind of riff on, on being a mad dog, teaching a mad dog new tricks. I don't know. What do you think? <laughs> I really like that like that becoming mad dog um uh yeah send the royalties this way please jason uh, should have copyrighted it didn't never mind i would say quite 
you know the the the, the joke that the media have picked upon and fans of other clubs about Jason Tyndall kind of getting in Eddie Howe's space. Mm. I think Jason Tyndall would call his autobiography Jason Tyndall by Jason Tyndall. And I think Jason Tyndall would also call Eddie Howe's autobiography Eddie Howe and Jason Tyndall because that's by what Jason he does. He just Tindall. has to be in. Yeah, by Jason Tyndall. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. I'd read it's it. About... There's got to be, yeah. I, I want yeah. a good, like, a good. you know, in autobiographies when there's like, you look at it and it's like the paper and then the shiny bits of paper because there's going to be loads of photos in the middle. I want loads of photos. That's what I want from Mad Dog's autobiography. That's the academic research. Is there another one? <laughs> there's another one. Uh, this is from Redline, 1405. As we know, the team is full of class lads now. Yes, we do. Well said. Yes, we do. If you could immortalize one player from the current squad and have them sign a contract forever, who would it be for him, Charlotte? It's Kieran Trippier. Oh, yeah. But I'm sure Kieran Trippier is going to stay until the end of his career and then become a talisman of the club. I'm sure of it. You don't look sure. It's, it's the premise. I'm, uh, you know, um, Redline... I get it. They're class. We love them. We never want them to leave. I don't want anything to change ever. It's a hate change. The, just the idea of giving them a contract forever. It's like, do we really need a fifty-eight-year-old, um, fifty-eight-year-old Kevin Trippier keeping out a young lad from the squad coming through because he's here forever? He's immortal. Are we Does not? He age? Like, Does he get oh, younger? I don't know. Oh, what, what what kind of magic contract do you think we're putting these people in? Like, you have to sign this oh, contract. I'm, so, I'm sorry that the forever contract isn't real enough for you, Charlotte. <laughs> it's not real enough for you. You're adding the magic clauses. <laughs> I'm fine with it. I think Anthony Gordon, because as a mother, it's been a joy <laughs> to have him nearer me, um, you know, for Sunday lunch and stuff when he's not playing. So I'd be glad for him to stick around for a bit longer. The rest of his life. <laughs> he must play Who for you Newcastle. guys pick? Tell us in yeah. the comments. I would pick Charlotte. Thanks for asking. Um, you just, oh, yeah. I, I, would, I, I, I think Jamal Lascelles has got inexplicably better through exposure to Eddie Howe. So by the time, like by 2050, um, how fucking good is he going to be if he's a I also assume player. Jamal Lascelles is on a forever contract. <laughs> like... <laughs> <laughs> like Charlotte says, let us know what you think. We love your comments. She, in particular, enjoys them. Thank you, Charlotte, and thanks everyone for watching. Can't wait to do another one of these. Please like the video and hit the subscribe button if this is your thing. See you next time. Bye bye. <laughs>